I'm going to review the judges' scorecards for this golovkin Dervinchenko fight. Go through them round by round and compare them to my scorecard. But before I do that, I first want to address the fact that there's a lot of people out there claiming that this fight was a robbery, saying that Derevinchenko clearly won by several rounds and that there's absolutely no way on earth you could have realistically scored this fight for Gennady Golovkin. Well, I wholeheartedly disagree with that. The reality is, this was not a fight where Derevinchenko dominated the majority of the rounds and therefore the majority of the rounds were very easy to score and it was very straightforward. This wasn't that kind of fight. This was a fight where there were multiple rounds which could have gone either way, which were open to interpretation. That's the reality of it. People pushing this narrative that it was clear as day who won. I would urge them, as I said in my post-fight video, to go watch the fight again in the cold light of day without the commentary. This is the version I watched. And remember, I didn't watch this fight live. I watched this video right here on Daily Motion on a channel called Boxing Fights Videos. And he has a version of the fight, which is from the Canal X uh, television station. It's in HD, 60 frames per second, crystal clear quality. It has Eastern European commentary. So unless you understand that language, you won't be influenced by what the commentators are saying, as I wasn't, okay? So I would urge you to go do that. Because what I think is going on here, or what I think happened during the fight, is that a lot of people were so shocked by not only Derevchenko's aggression and his success, but with how vulnerable Golovkin looked at times in this fight. They'd never seen him look so vulnerable. And so their shock led them to focus far more on what Derevchenko was doing and therefore ignore what Golovkin was doing because they just weren't focused on what Golovkin was doing a lot of the time. They were only focused on what Derevchenko was doing. And this skewed their perception of what was going on in a lot of the rounds and didn't allow them to score it as objectively as they should be. Now, I'm not saying that they were deliberately doing this, but it's just a, a byproduct of their shock. You know, at seeing Golovkin looking so vulnerable and what have you. So I would urge anybody who believes Derevchenko clearly won to go watch it again in the cold light of day. Look at what both men are doing. Because although Derevchenko was busier in many of the rounds, he was moving his hands a lot, he wasn't really landing as cleanly as Golovkin in many of the rounds. A lot of Derevchenko's work was a bit scrappy. Shots were being blocked, not really landing cleanly. You go watch it and you'll see. Whereas in some of them same rounds, Golovkin not as busy, but bang, he's landing solid jabs. Sometimes uppercuts, and Golovkin doesn't really throw many uppercuts. But in this fight, he lands some real nice uppercuts that snap Derevchenko's head back. The left hooks as well. Anybody still running with this narrative that Golovkin uh, caused the cut on Derevchenko's eye with his head, you're wrong. There's instant replay in the fight. It, it's not in the, uh, after the second round. It's later on in the fight. They show an instant replay a couple times of that moment where the cut occurred. And it's after Golovkin hits him with some left hands in the eye. So it was a perfectly legal situation. He caught him with a punch in the eye. He cut his eye. Same with Otto Wallin when he fought Tyson Fury a couple weeks back. It was caused by a punch. <laughs> All right. So... Again, people were so shocked by what Derevchenko was doing and how vulnerable Golovkin looked that they were actually inadvertently, unintentionally ignoring a lot of the good work Golovkin was doing himself. So that's what I think is going on. That's why I think people are calling it a robbery. And that goes for the fans watching in the arena as well. Okay. And depending on where you're sat, you might not be able to tell from a distance which punches are landing clean and which are not. You can just see an aggressive guy in Derevchenko coming forward, throwing lots of lever but not realizing a lot of them shots are being blocked and a lot landing clean. And at the end of the day, this is why we have three judges to score fights. This is why we don't have one. Because in a close round, which is open to interpretation, one judge might score it for the guy who's landing the cleaner shots. The other judge might score it for the guy who's landing, uh, you know, the more 
uh, the, the, what, the higher volume of punches and the third judge might score it for the guy who's more aggressive. This is why we have three judges. That's why we don't have one, <laughs> right? Because it's open to interpretation. And that's the reality of this fight. It was open to interpretation. Nobody has a definitive scorecard for this fight. My scorecard ain't definitive and your scorecard ain't definitive either. So let's not play that game. And the judge's scorecards ain't definitive. If you had Golovkin winning by a round or two, no problem. If you had Derevinchenko winning by a round or two, no problem. But let's not start acting like your scorecard is the ultimate one and nobody else, uh, you know, no, no other opinion is valid other than your scorecard because you're just the greatest judge in the world when it comes to scoring boxing matches. No, it wasn't that kind of fight. <laughs> it was a highly competitive fight. Anyway, all that aside, let's actually get to the judges' scorecards go through them round by round and compare them to my scorecard. And I'll tell you what I think about them at the end, because although I think it's reasonable to say Golovkin won, it was a fight which could have gone either way. And therefore you would expect that to be reflected in the judges scorecard. So you might expect a split decision. If it is unanimous, or, or, well, a split decision or a majority decision. And if it is unanimous, you might expect every judge to only have Golovkin winning by one point or maybe two points at most, right? That's not what we saw. And I'll get to that once I've reviewed these scorecards round by round. So first round, everybody scored it 10-8 to Golovkin because of the knockdown. There's still controversy over the knockdown, obviously, because many people say it was on the back of the head, so it shouldn't have been counted as a knockdown. Personally, I've looked at the instant replay several times. And to be honest with you, from that angle, I don't know if it was properly on the back of the head or if it was just behind the ear. I don't know. And I'm open to, you know, belie believing that a referee genuinely thought it was a clean punch and it wasn't on the back of the head. That he maybe thought it landed on the ear or whatever. Derevinchenko moves his head a lot. And so Golovkin might have been aiming <clears throat> to hit him in the face. When Derevinchenko moved his head a certain way, it ended up hitting him on the back of the head. Now, that's not an excuse, but I don't think Golovkin did it intentionally, in my opinion. And again, I'm not 100% sure if the punch was on the back of the head or not, but it was an unfortunate situation for Derevinchenko if it was on the back of the head. Either way, it was scored to Golovkin 10-8 by everybody, all the judges and on my scorecard. So the second round, two of the judges had it for Golovkin and one of them had it for Derevinchenko. I had the second round for Golovkin, and in my notes, I said Golovkin landed the cleaner, more effective punches, despite the fact that Derevinchenko had a higher work rate. Third round, two of the judges scored it for Derevinchenko, one of the judges scored it for Golovkin. Me personally, I scored the third round to Derevinchenko. I put in my notes that Golovkin was not throwing enough punches, and that Derevinchenko landed a hurtful, uh, or, or some hurtful body shots, and he was the aggressor. Fourth round, uh, two of the judges had it for Derevinchenko. One of them had it to Golovkin. Again, I scored the fourth round to Derevinchenko. In my notes, I said that Golovkin was struggling to cope with the work rate, speed and movement, and that Derevinchenko was the aggressor with the higher work rate. Fifth round, all three judges had it for Derevinchenko. And indeed, on my scorecard, I also had all three, uh, excuse me, I also had Derevinchenko win in the fifth round. And in my notes, I said that he had the superior work rate and he hurt Golovkin again with a body shot. And this time it was towards the end of the round. Sixth round. One judge, excuse me, two judges, judges had the sixth round to Derevinchenko and one of them had it to Golovkin. I had the sixth round to Golovkin myself. I get it put in my notes. He landed the cleaner, more effective shots. Seventh round, all three judges had this round to Golovkin, and so did I. Uh, I put on my notes that it was a close round, but Golovkin landed the cleaner, more effective shots. Eighth round, two of them had it for Golovkin, one of them had it for Derevinchenko. I had it for Golovkin, again, cleaner shots. Ninth round, Two of them for Golovkin, one of them for Derevinchenko. I had it for Derevinchenko, and I put in my notes it was a close round, but Derevinchenko's better work rate nicked it for him. Tenth round. 
One judge had it for Golovkin and two had it for Derevchenko. Now I had this round for Derevchenko, the 10th round. It was the best round of the fight, very dramatic round. And in my notes, I put Derevchenko's work rate, aggression and speed basically overwhelmed Golovkin at times and got him that round. You know, this is where some people might take issue with this particular judge's scorecard because I felt like the 10th round was one of Derevchenko's strongest rounds. He did get clipped plenty of times himself. Let's not get it twisted. But I did feel that was one of his strongest rounds. Was it close enough to have given it to Golovkin? Mm, I mean, maybe a push. Now, does this show that some judges, and I'm talking about in this fight, maybe giving Golovkin the benefit of the doubt in competitive rounds because of the fact that he's the house fighter. Possibly, yeah? But it's not a case of Golovkin getting the brakes beat off him in every single round and then the judge scoring it to Golovkin when he didn't do anything in the round. No, 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 no. That's not what is going on here for the most part, yeah? That 10th round to me is the closest that you could come to that kind of round which one of the judges scored it to Golovkin, even though Golovkin, you know, was under heavy, heavy pressure, under heavy fire in that round. Uh, the fifth round, where Golovkin was hurt with that body shot, nobody scored it to him, you know? Anyway, 11th round. Two judges scored it to Derevchenko, one of them scored it to Golovkin. I scored the 11th round to Golovkin myself. Again, I put cleaner shots. And then finally, the 12th round. Now, this round also surprised me a bit. Both guys were landing shots, but I felt that Derevchenko won the 12th round. I personally, you know, felt quite strongly that he won the round. Again, if you watch closely, Golovkin was landing his own shots in there. But, you know, sometimes it's easy to get shocked by the, the ferocity of Derevchenko's attacks and the speed of his attacks. But amidst those attacks, Golovkin was landing counters and solid shots in between at times. But even still, I actually have gone against all three judges who all scored it to Golovkin, which I, you know, I do find a little curious. I scored that 12th round to Derevchenko. In my notes, I put that uh, Derevchenko was the aggressor. He had a higher work rate and Golovkin looked tired. He looked buzzed at times and he was holding on. So again, the final scorecards from the judges were 115 to 112 twice and 114 to 113, which is what I had it to Gennady Golovkin. So yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below about the round by round scoring. Were there any rounds there that really ring alarm bells for you? And again, if there were rounds which ring alarm bells for me, it would be the 12th and the 10th. Because to me, they were, they were two of Derevchenko's strongest rounds. And for the 12th to be unanimous in favor of Golovkin, to me, that's a bit off. I'm not going to lie. That's a bit off. Yeah. The, the 10th round, you had, uh, where are we at? <clears throat> One of them giving Golovkin the 10th and two of them giving it to Derevchenko. The one who gave it to Golovkin, I would like to ask him why he gave it to Golovkin. You know, what is it that he saw that he felt trumped the things that Derevchenko did in that round? That one is also curious to me. But overall, I've got no issue with the result a Golovkin win. Is he going to run it back with Derevchenko? I highly doubt it. <laughs> but maybe Dazon will demand it. Who knows? Maybe if Dazon can sign Derevchenko, because at the end of the day, Derevchenko's with Lou DiBella. And who the hell is Lou DiBella promoting? Who, what, what shows is Lou DiBella putting on? You know? So, if Derevchenko can do some kind of deal with the zone, the zone might say, you know what, Gennady, if you're not going to get this Canelo fight, then we want you to fight Derevchenko again. But apparently, Canelo has already come out and said that he'll stop Golovkin in the third fight, which, you know, sounds like he's pretty interested in that rubber match now. And, you know, maybe that's what he'll go for if... Well, actually, despite what happens in the Sergei Kovalev fight, because he's not going to stay at light heavyweight, is he, even if he wins? Um, and if he loses, again, he'll be looking to come back down to 160. 
to fight another big fight with Triple G or maybe even fight Derevchenko. Who knows? So that's it, people. That's my review of the judges' scorecards. This robbery narrative, I think, is pretty off. It wasn't that kind of fight. It was highly competitive. And it, it, it wasn't even just the case of Golovkin landing solid jabs throughout the fight. Because Golovkin's jab wasn't as prolific in this fight as it has been in other fights. Golovkin was actually landing plenty of solid power punches. Hooks, uppercuts, right hands. Yeah, you got to watch it. They didn't have the kind of impact that we're used to seeing Golovkin's punches having. And that could have been because of the fact he was being pushed back a lot of the time. So his power is maybe not the same on the back foot as it is coming forward. That happens to a lot of fighters. You know, there are certain fighters who can punch tremendously hard on the back foot. But there's also a lot of other fighters who their power is massively diminished when they're being pushed back. Maybe that's the case with Golovkin. Um, also, Derevchenko's movements. See, Golovkin is quite a slow guy. He, in order to deliver with maximum power, he needs to be able to set himself. Derevchenko's movement, his head movement and his lateral movement in the pocket prevented Golovkin from setting himself and planting his feet to deliver with the kind of power we usually see him deliver with. You know, so I think that's another thing that's kind of offset Golovkin's power was Derevchenko's movement, his aggression, you know, having Golovkin on the def defensive a lot of the time. And something I mentioned in my post-fight video, the fact that Golovkin doesn't seem to train for power anymore now that he's with Jonathan Banks. He's trying to adapt as older fighters need to and become less of the power puncher and go back to boxing skills. In this fight right here, no matter which strategy he employed, in my opinion, he was going to have a tough night. Whether he tried to go in there and trade with Derevchenko, it was going to be tough for him. Or whether he, you know, tried to box, it was going to be tough either way. Um, but he, but as I say, he doesn't train for power with Jonathan Banks the way that he did with Abel Sanchez. And your power can vary from fight to fight. Let nobody convince you otherwise. Your power can vary from fight to fight. No question about it. So, you know, perhaps those things played into why Golovkin's punches weren't having the effect on Derevchenko that we might have expected. Um, Derevchenko appeared to be far more hurt by Danny Jacobs than he was by Gennady Golovkin. So anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. It's happening, I'm out. Join me on Patreon. I upload a minimum of two podcasts every single week covering a wide variety of controversial topics as well as live stream Q&A sessions. Take a look on screen right now at some of the podcasts I've produced so far. For just $3 a month, the equivalent of about £2 a month, you get access to all my new podcasts and my entire back catalogue of past podcasts, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen on your computer or on your smartphone or tablet by downloading the Patreon app from the Google Play Store or the App Store for free. The Patreon app also allows you to download each podcast in MP3. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, you get access to dozens of hours of exclusive content. It's easy to sign up, there's no contract, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.